Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome an owner of a creative design studio, which got me thinking, what is a creative design studio? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? A creative studio is a collaborative group that brings together all the creative disciplines working on marketing and brand topics. This includes design, copywriters, and the visual team. Everyone can balance ideas off each other, which fosters creativity. Creative design involves using computer-generated imagery and design and digital animation to visualize a product. It aims to produce unique and memorable designs that stand out so that the customer may easily identify a brand or product. Think of a design studio as a convergence of thinking. It allows professionals to delve into creative thoughts, visions, and ideas with a group to create an offering of sorts, a piece of art, a movie, a physical product, in short amount of time. In short, it is a brainstorming session. But why is it important? As an individual, have you ever wanted to improve a product? I know I have. In fact, if anyone wants to help solve the issue of why the cabinet over the fridge is never obtainable, let us know. Me and my boy Evan have an idea. And big shout out to my boy Evan for kicking cancer's ass. I love you, man. Okay, back to why this is important. Well, have you ever brushed your teeth before? A toothbrush is a fitting example of the power of design according to Columbia Entrepreneur Innovation and Design. Look at the improvement the smartphones have had over the several years. Their improvement is so vast, this next entrepreneur has used the iPhone to create a digital brand. When we had a kid, the first thing we bought was a butt wiping warmer. What? I didn't even know that butt wipes needed to be warmed, let alone there was an actual warmer for it. But that was an improvement of design. The process of design is useful not only for building great products, services, and solutions, but also for pursuing a more creative and open-minded approach to life, according to Columbia Entrepreneur Innovation and Design. Now, some small design studios have some advantages over large ones, like equal amount of talent for less money, smaller spaces for smaller staff usually means lower overhead costs, And well-located design studio will cost a lot of money in a downtown district versus a studio ran from a garage, say. Small groups can also provide better communication in some cases. Think back to the telephone game we used to play in school. Communicating with one person or a small group is much easier than speaking with a large agency. It also helps feel connected to the client. It is exceedingly difficult to not feel like a number when working with a large organization. And that is why the entrepreneur should care. This is not a knock on large creative design studios. This is more of a plea to entrepreneurs to identify other entrepreneurs in creative spaces. As I've stated before, we are a global community of entrepreneurs. There are so many creative solutions yet to be uncovered, and these small creative studios can help. But do not take my word for it. Get out there. Network. Create. Together. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have an interesting entrepreneur because this individual really does a lot of work on their phone, but this is not all they do. They do quite a bit. Luel, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on here, first of all. And, I, and it's, I think it's a privilege and honor to be on this podcast and be on your platform, because especially what you're doing, uh, helping out the community, you're giving out free game. Yeah. You know, I listened to a couple of episodes even today, and I was like, wrote a couple things down. I was like, oh, I didn't know 
different taxes and tax brackets. But anyway, thank oh, yeah. you. Thank you for uh yeah, for having me on this podcast. But I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And I'm excited for this one because you're you're a creative man. You got a creative, mm-hmm. creative mind. But first, before we get on that, let's introduce the world to Luell. Who is Luell? Luell is um uh, man, I'm a human being. I'm a complex human being, <laughs> but um I'm a multi hyphenated ADHD, um, trauma survivor, uh, creative um, entrepreneur who's a father of five beautiful boys, five children, five boys, y'all. Man. Twelve <laughs> is the oldest, two is the youngest. It's on and cracking. They got you running. Um, yeah, and I've been. Um, I'm a I'm a proud husband as well to my my wife um, Becca for. 12 years about to be 13 may 2nd nice so in fact today is my anniversary year oh, yeah, four yeah. year four baby congratulations i saw it on instagram yeah yeah congratulations appreciate that's it dope. so that's what i am I'm, I'm that's why i'm a creative through and through and i feel like um i'm a human advocate i, I am a human advocate it is because of my background because of where i come from anything i do whether it be business or creative work uh i believe in you know, helping out humans. That's why it's called helphumans.care is the website because I bring that care attitude in every environment Um, and to rehumanize business, rehumanize people, to rehumanize philosophies and conversations like the conversation we have now. So I'm a human advocate and um, and that's why it's called help humans. And let's, let's, let's let's talk about that. What, what, in your definition, what is a Mm -hmm. human advocate? A human advocate, by definition, is a person who thinks, who has the consciousness of humanity before labels, um, humanity before function, um, just uh, off the bat human a perspective, a beautiful, healthy perspective on humans. And in that it leads to other actions, right? It leads to other, other uh, ideas that are beneficial to the human, not at the expense of the human or success at the expense of the human. And that's how I wanted to build my brand. But a human advocate is somebody, it's not somebody who just, uh, we want to just put typical, you know, protest on the street and advocate for human rights, but it's also, it's how you conduct your day to day with one another and how you conduct, how you build your business, how you build your brand. And, um, and who is it for? Are you serving humanity? Are you serving yourself and type of deal? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about the, the company. It's a help humans dot care. You mentioned what, what is it, mm-hmm. what does it do and how did you create the concept? Um, help humans is a digital creative studio, um, black owned family grown, uh, digital creative studio. Uh, the reason why I say family grown is because I try to make it a family thing. Um, we offer creative services to personal brands, companies, and organizations. We, you know, we help brands tell their story. At the same time, we're leaning in more to the educational realm of educating people, empowering people to be their platform, to use their iPhone, you know, to use what they have in a hand and work, like my dad always say, work with the flower you have and begin to uh, not only provide creative services, but create content for, for uh, in-house and also for others and to educate people on how to create content for themselves, to use their voice, build their brand and be their platform. And so how did, how did you get here? Did you get some education in this area or did you just kind of grassroot it? Yeah. Grassroot. My education is it, it's as far as it goes is high school. <laughs> I'm the youngest out of five siblings and, um, and, uh, and my parents, you know, uh, and I got two parents in a home, the whole long story. I'm the youngest out of five. And I just kind of always had the, like, you know, grabs the attention, you know, <laughs> like, hello, you know, I'm, I'm always the one making noise. I'm the one that's trying to get attention and, and all that type of stuff. So, uh, I think that part of me and part of my personality made me like a pioneer and a visionary sort of like, and, um, so help humans, it's been through many forms that the name was, it's a creative studio, but it wasn't, uh, it was established in 2015, but I've been on the create, I've been on this journey and now for the first time it has clarity, but Help Human started off with just me thinking, um, okay, I'm a creative. I love fashion. I love design. I'm a videographer. I'm a multi-hyphenated creative. And I believe that you can use creativity to serve humanity. So I'm going to use my creativity, you know, to serve humanity. I'm going to create clothes. I'm going to create videos. I'm going to create content and monetize that content. And when I monetize that content, I'm going to donate a specific percentage to a local cause. 
So that's how the concept of Help Humans came. It came as a corporation, LLC, but run like a nonprofit organization. Because I said, you know what? My business motto is like, why do I have to be successful at the expense of humans? But why not my success benefit humans? So I said, okay, if I, the more I climb up, the more I'm going to give back. So, and it keeps me balanced and honest. So it, that's how it started off, but it shifted to many things. And now we have full out the digital creative studio with uh, um, Help Humans LLC is the umbrella that supports brands that I create. And I'm an ADHD, so it's hard for me to do one thing. Yeah. And uh, so it allows me to branch out and to create a, a clothes, clothing design, a clothing brand called Rehumanize and uh, be a platform, which is a magazine blog that helps people be, uh, use their devices and tools to, you know, build their brand. Nice. Now, what, what kind of companies do you uh, give back to? You mentioned, you know, some of the proceeds that you earn. Uh, you actually yeah. give back to some of these community. What some of what are some of those companies, and why is it so important for you to give back to the community? Um, yeah, the companies that I did it was not local. The first campaign I did it was Help Human Shirt. Um, it was right, just and right. It was twenty twenty. It's called Right and Just campaign. And what I did is create these shirts to um, uh, create revenue to uh, give a hundred percent of the proceeds to EJ, EJII. Uh, I forgot the name of the, I forgot it right now. I'm drawing a blank, but um, uh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank right now. But it's to help and combat um, the injustice of incarceration that's oh, taking okay. place. So we did that, um, and now that was a phase in 2020. But as a company, we evolved. Um, and now we're trying to find. We actually in talks of a a, a, a nonprofit organization. Oh, nice to uh, c- collaborate uh, in that area to give back to the community. Um, and I think it's important because like I said, I, I really, when I say help humans, I really mean that. Like I want to help brands. I want to help people. I want to help, you know, uh, yeah, help humans in, yeah. in, in many ways I can. And, uh, it's important to get back to the community. That's what drives me. Like I said, in the beginning, I said, it, I'm a trauma survivor. I know how it feels, you know, I know how it feels to not have, I know how it feels to be overlooked. I know how it feels to go through difficult situation. So that created empathy for me to like touch humanity. So I, I want to use my gifts and my talents, my revenue to give back to community, to make a difference. That's what I tell my kids, you know, excuse right. me, and that's what I, that's what I uh, live out. Yeah. Now you mentioned you kind of started the business in, in 2012, right? Was it, was it your first 2015 business? or 2015? Sorry, 2015. <laughs> now did, no. did you, was this your first business in 2015 or did you do something before that? See, this, this was, uh, no, this is not my first business, but um, it's pretty, it's hard to explain because it's, all right, let me, let me go back. Yes, all right. let's take all it right. back. So, let's take it back. <laughs> listen, all I got is a high school education. That's it. All right. Oh, and that's a lot. A hustler, hey, that's a lot. Entre- <laughs> that is, and an entrepreneur, right? And um, I mean, me and my older brother, like that's next to me, um, he, we about like 18 months apart and I always, you know, we, we were young and I, it was my idea at eight and he was uh, 10 or, you know, 10 to, you know, sell flowers to neighbors for some money, but sell their own flowers to back to them. They didn't know we picked it out of the yard. So that, that was my idea. Um, it, so it was my idea to go to the Nike store and act like poor kids and hand, and say, Hey, you know, we lived in Portland and, um, uh, and it was right across the street um, from the Nike store. And we was like, hey, can we borrow some money? And we was going to take that money, flip it, and try to do some other, other stuff, like get more flowers or something like that. My dad caught us. He oh, said, man. you do not need to be, uh, you know, uh, begging for money. I'm sorry, none of my kids is doing that. So he took the money we got and bought, you know, some pop cans and I mean, some soda cans, and we began to sell soda. All that to say is that... um. I just, the ADHD is kicking in. I just lost my thought just right now. Oh, you're good. So you guys are just kind of, you've been kind of grinding since the the youth kind of been on the streets with your brother, just selling, you know, doing little side hustles, huh? Yeah, that's, that was a young age. Um, That's the the original question. So yeah, at a young age, uh, that's, that's what was taking place, which showed a little bit of entrepreneurship and me. I didn't recognize until I was older. That being said, school was not for me. It didn't work for me. And, um, and it was tough. I never fit in the everyday work nine to five, even though I did. I mean, I have five kids. So I had like probably like 20 different jobs before I really established my company. And I, and every company I've been into, uh, every 
place I work for, they always say, you don't really belong here. You need to do your own thing all the time. And I'm talking about simple, like, you know, rather be working at Panera Bread or driving a truck or whatever it might be. But I always did stuff on the side. But in 2005, we established a business, me and my brother and I, we was 21, 22, and established a business. It was called Level 7. We was in ministry. We was this Christian artist. And we was going to sell shirts, do music, and go on tour. And yeah, then we, <laughs> we, we were, <laughs> we were, we were excited. We we're pumped up. I had the vision. I created the logo on Microsoft paint. We went <laughs> into the swap meet and we looked at store prices for you know, the shirt blank shirts. And we priced it out, drove around and priced out the shirts and say, oh, okay, we can get it. We can bump up the price 50% right here. If we shop at this store and we uh, printed shirts, um, gave out CDs and all that type of stuff. But we was invited to perform. Uh, and then we performed, we ended up getting a check later in the mail and that check, um, we couldn't cash it because they wrote it under the name level seven reach heaven. And we didn't register our business. Oh no. All that to say is that we kept that check for $200 and framed in as a, and just a, as a reminder to always be prepared yeah. in, in business. And, uh, we learned a lot of lessons. So no, it's not my first business. Um, trying to start a business, but this is the first business that in 2015 that I've consistently stayed with. And actually now I'm working full time from freelancer to now entrepreneur. So I love it. That's a, that's a great story. In fact, you know, one of the things you were mentioning, you know, you and your brother were sitting in front of, uh, of Nike, you know, getting some money. And then you eventually took that money to start your start and sale soda cans. Now kind of sticking with the same concept, how did you finance this uh, venture? Did you do some grassroots? Did you venture capital angel investments? How did you decide to finance this new business? Um, yeah, no finances. I'll just, it was the hobby. You know, I didn't realize I was um, an entrepreneur. I didn't realize that until the age of 30, to be honest with you, I was in ministry and I was pursuing ministry roles as a pastor and, cl- and clergy work for uh, 14 years. And in that I battled with ministry or it for entrepreneurship. And, um, and it was hard because I thought it was a moral thing. I was like, okay, God wants me to do this, but I want to do this, who I'm going to listen mm, to. Yeah. And, and it wasn't until I started listening to myself, be honest with you until success started to happen. Um, because I think I, it was all in my head, you know? So how difficult was that to pivot from, you know, going to studying for several years to be a minister to just like, you know what, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Um, it was very difficult because I always had the itch to be entrepreneur. This is how I'm wired. But when I was in ministry, I'm a, like, when I say trauma survivor, I didn't want to get deep into it, but I'm a religious trauma survivor. So when I was in ministry, um, it, it was, it was tough. People saw the talent, they saw my gift, my ability, but they didn't, they wanted to use it for the ministry. And they didn't, I was a young vulnerable kid that didn't know my capabilities that, Hey, hold on, this can provide for my future family. This can, you know, this is actually a business. I didn't come from a family of, um, of, you know, educated, you know, people, but my dad did have his painting company and that's what sparked my idea. But yeah, it was a hard to navigate from the, that religious, uh, mindset to now entrepreneurship. And I found myself being hired as a media director, doing all the things I do now as a creative in these ministry roles, also as the teaching, as a speaking pastor and everything like that. Uh, and I find myself being hired for all those things, but not using it for me, you know, mm, yeah. uh, for me and my family as an independent uh, person. So it was, it was very difficult. So I stripped away from that um, and began to pursue my family and I pursue like, you know, uh, our dreams and our vision. And it's been great. Nice. Yeah. So, so you kind of, was it a pretty gradual transition from ministry to being a, you know, full-time entrepreneur or did you kind of get some, get some clients uh, under your belt before you made that full-time transition? Yeah, I was in, in, and it's hard to explain. Cause I was, yeah, I was in ministry for 14 years and it was until like three years ago, 2018, like right before 2019, when we said, you know what, we taken a sabbatical. And really, we was done with church. We was done with ministry at okay. this time. We was burnt out, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, and it w- so we thought we kind of thought it was a sabbatical. So it was gradual. At the same time, I was getting hired to do work. Gotcha. Um, I was getting hired to I was doing client work type of stuff, uh, freelance deal. And then um, 
then it wasn't, then I didn't, then I established and said, you know what, we're, I'm more than a freelancer. I'm more than a videographer. I am a agency. I'm a creative director. I feel like I can direct things. I have a vision and an eye for things and I want people to hire me for that. And um, so as, as I kept getting clients and more jobs and I, and I increased my prices, my confidence increased and I go, wow, this, this, this industry, you can make some good money. Yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, so I, like, I started pursuing that and yeah, it was gradual to answer your question. I, I'm sorry. I can't answer. No, I love it. That's a great answer. <laughs> That's a great answer. Now, now what, what would you say was difficult about kind of, you know, you pivoting out of ministry and you're starting your own business, uh, you know, doing it full time. What would you say was, was the difficult part about it? The difficult is learning to trust myself. Mm, that was the, yeah. that's the difficult part, you know? And, and when you, in a, in the religion I was in, the emphasis, don't trust yourself, trust God. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, the, I didn't know that find a balance in between that, you know? But, um, so it was like lack of trust in self. Um, I don't know if I'm doing this for my selfish ambition, pride, ego, or I'm being a humble servant. So that was the dilemma I was dealing with. As a creative visionary, you can only imagine how much I have vision, but then I stop, slow down, or I'm hesitant, in a, or I go fast, and I, and I stop. And I had people see my journey, and they're like, Luel, you started this. What are you doing over here? Yeah. You're doing this. You're doing that. And they've seen every, my whole process, but it wasn't until I got clarity. But that, you know, so, yeah, that was difficult because trusting self it was, uh, is what I had to learn. And, uh, and I, I start betting on myself and boy, yeah. oh boy, start paying off. <laughs> yes. And I, I imagine, you know, I'm, I grew up born and raised Catholic and, you know, kind of coming up in a religion where, um, really talking about yourself, right. Or talking about your accomplishments was not yeah. looked at favorably. Right. In fact, mm-hmm. it was frowned upon, right. You're, you're not supposed to be giving yourself praise. You're supposed to be praising God. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and I think as I grew and I'm like feeling that sense of imposter syndrome I've talked about before, you know, where you're like, you just feel like, yeah, you don't belong kind of thing. And then once I started to kind of believe in myself to your point, right. And started investing in me, that's when the confidence started to come. And I realized, you know, it's, it's not, I shouldn't, nobody should be ashamed of celebrating their wins, right? Those, those are wins Mm -hmm. that you've worked very hard. In fact, I was talking to another guest about like, you know, when these one hit wonder songs come out, yeah, it might be a one hit wonder, but they probably made hundreds of songs before that, that weren't that hit, you know? So it wasn't mm-hmm. these people just doesn't happen overnight. Now w- with the business, what would you say, you know, kind of transitioning, what would you say has been easy? Has there been anything easy? Yeah. With the business side, it's been easy to create. Of course, you know, as a creative, it's been easy to create and it's been easy to like, yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, that's probably not the most, but yeah, that's easy part. Yeah. You know, obviously the difficult part, I can talk about that, but you know, but anyway, but the, the easy part has been easy to create, easy to um, create relationships. Um, I, I'm just made a video uh, and I talked about how, you know, when I'm not a salesy guy, I'm not, I, I am out there, but I'm not the type, Hey, I'm the guy for you. If you need create creative work, Hey, hit me up, DM you. I'm not that guy. I need a little bit of that sometimes, but I am the loud introvert. I should call myself. So what's been easy for me is to create and put my work out there and let my work draw attention and let my work begin to like, when I can't sell myself, my work helps sells me. So in, 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 in consistently doing that and, uh, it's, it's been easy to tell my story, to talk about my brand, go behind the scenes of my brand, the name changes of my brand, the, the new logo of my brand. I allow people to be out to see me and see that process. I'm a public processor and I found that, find that to be therapeutic for me sometimes, but sometimes it hits me because, you know, but yeah, you know, because you put yourself out there yeah. you act like a fool. Yeah. But um, at the same time, I keep trying. I got a motto in our household. We say, keep trying, keep going. And that's not a go through hard stuff. No, it's keep being curious, but stay on the process, you know. And um, so that's been easy is keep going, keep trying, keep going, creating consistency, even in the moment where there's no clarity, just yeah. keep going. So, you know, you mentioned right now that you're you're not a marketer, right? But how, mm-hmm. but you, you have to brand yourself and market. How do you brand the company? How do you market the company? Yeah, we, we kind of, it's, 
to be honest with you, I'm learning that myself just now because I, I think branding is really getting to know yourself and a self-awareness. And um, I'm just now finding more self-awareness. My idea of branding was to show off my shiny logo, was to show off my work. That was my idea of branding. But I understand, you know, what am I known for? And whatever I'm known for, I want to capitalize on that. And I want to solve that. I want to solve that problem. And I want to answer that question. And that's why I believe in be that solution. So now my branding, my market myself is how can I answer stupid questions or answer simple questions? Yep. So I'm making video and content by educating and answering questions. And I, I believe I increase my van, my brand when I add value to others, when I give. Yep. And, um, and that's what I'm on the go. I've been, I've been, people have seen my work now I'm branding myself. I'm showing my work from a market, from a, uh, influencer to an educator. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's what I think. You know, one of the things you mentioned right now is, is, uh, the value piece, right? I think, I think that's an important lesson for a lot of entrepreneurs is if you can provide value, you can sell anything, right? Mm. How important is it to kind of create value for for what you're doing? Because that's kind of, I'm assuming that's kind of how you get your clients back. So how do you kind of create value for your clients? Um, yeah, value is serving them. Value is answering their questions. Um, value is, and, uh, and, and, and that's me learning. Because, um, and that's the key. I believe in like generosity is the gateway in the door to prosperity. I honestly believe that. And I believe in giving, I truly care. Like when I come alongside your company, you tell me your company vision and where you going. I feel like you're talking about my vision. I'm an empath. I'm, I'm a highly sensitive person and I'm aware of that, but I use that to my advantage. And, um, I think, yeah, I forgot the whole main thing that you was saying the question. Sorry. No, you're good. We're talking about your brand and what, um, the value piece. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's that, it's that care aspect when yeah. people interact with me and they, they hear me, they like, dang, this dude care about the brand. He's acting like he's part of the team. He's acting like he's one of the employees or he's part of my creative team. And cause I feel that I'm easily, you know, I'm easily not easily pleased, but easily inspired by others, no okay. matter who you are. So, um, and I learned from so many other people, so I, I believe in adding value by caring and also answering those questions. And it's important because it creates trust and um, it creates trust with, with the community and the people you're trying to reach. And that's the key is to consistent, create that trust, um, uh, show that you care, show that you, um, you want, you want to see them succeed. And that's what I say to myself. I say, you know what? I honestly love making other people look good as a videographer, as a graphic. And I love seeing other people succeed. And I said, that's why I'm in a niche market. And that's why I'm a succeed, you know, so add value to people, show them that you care. I believe helping people is you're going to get money. You yeah. Know? It's very true. Very true. What, what motivates you? What motivates you to kind of keep going? What motivates me is my, the, my legacy, my children, I want them to live in the world where they don't have to work for nobody. They have a choice if they want to work for somebody. I want them to live in the world where, yeah, it's, it's unfair. It's definitely discrepancies, it's biases, it's racism, it's prejudice, it's sexism, homophobia. You call it all these things. Yes, we live in this world, but I want you to have the best platform, the best start in the, you know, so you can make your impact in this world and your kids can. So legacy motivates me. And another thing that motivates me, it starts there in my family and my kids, but also what motivates me is literally seeing other people touched and changed. When I see other people take my advice on a creative level and they implement it, I'm like doing, I'm showing my wife, like, you see, I just told them that and they just did. Oh, I celebrate. I'm like, wow, they're winning. Yep. So yeah, to make an impact on people that motivates me into nice. really everything I feel inside, all the greatness, all the vision, all the feel like I, I, I feel like God has given me and I can do what motivates me is to fulfill that. And I kind of have a little fear though. Fear doesn't run my life as much as it used to, but there's a little bit of part of me that says, you know what? what drives me is to not, maybe I, that won't happen to fulfill all this potential. That's the fear, but also that drives me, but also there's a piece about it as well. But anyway, that motivates me. <laughs> guys, you know, you, you mentioned the word fear, you know, um, mm -hmm. and it's probably easy to be fearful and kind of new 
new ventures. Have you ever felt that moment of self doubt of, of when you've pivoted from what you've been doing to what you're doing now? Or do, have you always felt like, no, this is what I should be doing? Um, <clears throat> the, the fear left once I got really rid of the religious perspective, you know, and I, 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 the fear is, and I, do I have self-doubt? Yes, I have self-doubt sometimes, you know, I definitely do. I like, you know, I have like three things going on in my head at once of, of projects that, that, that I need to get done, you know, and, and I got to, you know, so, and I got five kids and a family. So yeah, sometimes I'm like, can I do this? You know, yeah. I'm a solopreneur right now. Yeah. My wife is coming on board to help, help out a little bit, but I let her take her time because we already run a household, you know what I mean? Um, so, but yeah, some, so yeah, yeah, I have self-doubt, but no, not, not fear. I don't have fear as much. I feel like I can do anything now. I feel like it's just a matter of doing it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. What, what keeps you up at night is a business, a small business owner. What, what's that? What's those things that keep you up at night? Well, it's probably is that it is part of contradicts myself and you're going to find that because I'm a human, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's what process is, right? Process. Everybody look like a hypocrite in their process. We all in one. Um, but no, uh, what keeps me up at night is kind of what I said um, just now is that, you know, a lot of juggling of clients do they, you know, I'm still working on like, okay. Um, uh, like, I hope they okay with this project. I hope they okay with this product. Sometimes I think about that and they love it and I keep in good feedback, but at the same time, I'm, maybe it's that perfectionist. And sometimes it's maybe, can I get this done on time? Can I do that? So sometimes that can keep me up, uh, up at night, but most of the time to keep me up, up, what keeps me up all night is literally new ideas that I got to say no to. And, um, and just expounding on my projects that I'm doing now and a new vision for the future of the, of the business and new creative tools. And just, it just juices me. I'm always like tinkering up here and it's sometimes I need to turn it off. I love it. But, where, where, where you mentioned, you know, you're kind of thinking about the future of the business. Where, where is the future of business headed? Where, where you see your, where do you see the business in five years? Mm-hmm. The big vision in five years, I see help humans. Um, I see help humans being a, a, a premier digital space in this world, in this planet, on the internet, the small blip on the internet, um, a premier place for content that literally helps people in you name it area, help moms, help, help uh, dads over 30. You know what I mean? Um, Because that's the future. I call it his help humans network. It's a digital, digital uh, media television network where we got one, one network with many channels. And um, so that's, that's where I see and people can get online courses. They can get coaching um, help humans be in a digital space for, you know, you name it, but the key is to start off small then to work, work our way out. But yeah, five years from now, uh, help humans network, um, a digital hub for people finding their solutions. I mean, you know, so. I love it. I love it. Now, what, what advice would you give folks, you know, that either aspiring entrepreneurs or, you know, maybe other folks, maybe clients you've worked with, right? Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for folks, uh, for some consumers or, or, you know, other entrepreneurs? Mm-hmm. my advice is to like just because you can do many things now do that one thing that people are asking for that you're known for and let that open up the door for you to do the other things you want and I'm, I'm speaking from experience i'd be way farther along if i wasn't juggling five things at once um but that's advice i give you but in order to know is 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 to try to grasp self-awareness know yourself get to know yourself so much so you can know what you can and cannot do what works and what doesn't work for you and what can get you in the door or get you out of the door. And I think that's the advice is and be patient with that small thing. You have that one thing you want, you want to fit 20 things in the door, but just get that one thing yep. that only that allows you to the door yes, first, but very true. that the hardest part is that patience part. So what about for yourself? What, what advice would you give a, a younger Luel? Is exactly what I just said now. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, first of all, this is what I give advice. Luell, bet on yourself, trust yourself, flourish or fail, but 
do it yourself. You know what I mean? Seriously. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid. Um, and also, uh, just be patient and just what, just whatever, if, if it's just the camera that gets you through that door of you being behind the lens as a videographer, though you want to speak, though you want to consult, though you want to, they don't want you for that. It's okay. You can you put that on the shelf. It's all right, Luel. Now just get, get that camera, be a videographer, take away your ego and just be that person and be patient and the, the doors will open up to other things you want to do instead of the other way around. Yeah. That's what I would tell us. I like it. So for the listeners at home that are interested in learning more about you, learn more about the company, maybe clients out there, some future prospect clients, or how do they find you? How do they find your information? Where are you at on the social media channels? Let them know how they can connect with you. Well, you can connect me with me on my website at helphumans.care. Um, it's under the site is under construction. Literally, um, my client's website does better, looks better than mine. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, it's under construction. Helphumans.care. You can find me at uh, Be Your Platform. Um, that's that's where, you know, you can find me on Instagram at Be Your Platform. Also, I got like three different Instagram accounts. Also, BYP.iPhone is another one I'll give tips, tools, the news on how to be your platform, create content for your brand, your business using just your iPhone. Yep. So yeah, that's when I follow. That's That's when I follow. Like I'm always like, how do I get better on this dang podcast? How do people, how to get more people to be aware of me, but I'm doing it on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, everything's mobile. And and for that's actually a great thing for entrepreneurs to think about is when you're thinking about marketing and branding and you're thinking about your website, think mobile first. Because at the end of the day, I think it's like 68 or 70 some odd percent of the people that are going to look at your site are going to look at it through the mobile app. And I'm telling this to myself right now because I have a mobile app and a mobile site. Um, But I realized I'm asking all of my listeners to subscribe to my newsletter. But on my mobile, I did not put anything to subscribe on my newsletter. It's only on the actual website. So I noticed Uh that today. So now I have to go back and rebuild so I can you know, make sure that the listeners, when they get onto the mobile version of the webpage, they can sign up for a newsletter. It's the, 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 the nuances, <laughs> man, the nuances to building a website. I, I, I built my own and now I'm, I'm realizing like, this is the, I don't wish this on my worst enemy. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's no joke. That's why I, I'm not done with mine. And it's, yep. Yeah. It's no joke. It takes time. Well, mm-hmm. Luel, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I really do appreciate it. Again, for folks, please go check it out. Human help humans dot care, right? Is the website. And then yes. uh, check out all the different social channels. Again, I follow, I follow well on a few different ones. Cause I actually do get a lot of tips, especially from the iPhone marketing. So branding. So please do check that out for folks at home. Please subscribe to the newsletter. You can also subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook and have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.